the last episode, our remaining four contestants met Mr. Ranjit Yadav. With him, Samsung secured the number two position in the smartphone market. You're going to have to, Ranjit, pitch out candidate. I must say Tony. Tony was pitched out last week, leaving us with only three contestants to face the next level and take a step closer to realizing their five crore dream. Hello and welcome to episode number 10 of The Pitch. Three episodes left, three contestants left, three steps left to scale the summit of 5 crore rupees on India's biggest business reality show. Every other person dreams of starting a business. But business is not for everyone. We found 10 entrepreneurs who just might make the cut on this show. But the question is, who will win 5 crore rupees and realize their dream? Now, Rajiv and Tony, two very strong contenders, have been pitched out in the last two episodes. They enjoyed immunity twice. What I mean is, it can be just one small mistake, one lapse of concentration that can see our contestants being pitched out. But that's all for me. Let's talk to our contestants, our final three. Welcome everyone. So, Sriram, how does it feel to be the only male participant left on the show? I'm not sure whether to feel good or bad about it. <laughs> but for the last two episodes, my roommates have been pitched out. <laughs> so, oh. so, are you roaming alone now so that nobody gets yeah, Nobody wants to share my room now. <laughs> there is nobody to share with. Priyanka, do you feel there's gender bias in the business world? Definitely not because um, I've been well supported by my family, my colleagues, uh, my partners, even my college. That's good to hear. Aparna, any uh, women entrepreneurs you uh, admire, looked up to in the world? I think uh, Shanaz Hussain is someone I look up to. Right, so all this time we've been briefing the contestants about business strategies. We've been asking them about their uh, ideas of how to advance a particular business or fulfill a particular task. What we haven't ever asked them about is a little bit about the other side of their lives, their hobbies, their pastimes. What do they do? when they're not obsessing about their businesses. I'll start with the ladies. Aparna, what do you do when you're not um, working on how to make great organic products? I like reading. Pranka, what about you? I'm into uh, adoption of street dogs and cats. That sounds pretty intense. Sriram, what about you? I've heard that you have a passion for cooking. I cook, it de-stresses me. It's like, uh, gives, uh, I'm, I'm very creative when it comes to cooking. What kind of food do you cook? I cook everything from South Indian, Italian, continent. Really? And it de-stresses you? Yeah, but, uh, it might stress the people yes. who eat it, but... <laughs> he beats us out there. Well, I'm going to give you guys a hint that today we have, as our business leader and judge, is one of India's finest chefs and restauranters. In 1999, he opened one of my favorite restaurants, Indigo. It was, at the time, one of the finest restaurants in fine dining in the country and remains so today. Through its doors have walked in some of the world's richest and most famous people. Rahul Akerkar, director de cuisine of Degustabas Hospitality. Summer jobs in New York kitchens sparked his lifelong affair with food. 1999 was the year when he first set up Indigo, a fine dine restaurant in Mumbai. It made to Condé Nast Travelers world's hottest 60 tables list in 2000. And in 2003 was Travel and Leisure Magazine's top reasons to visit Mumbai. Rahul was featured in Asia Week's survey of Kitchen Gods in 2001, raising him to the top five pedestal in Asia. The Indigo Delicatessen was set up in 2005 and the Indigo Cafe in 2008, followed by Tote on the Turf and Neil, thus spreading his business and the gustatory experience. Please welcome on the show, Mr. Rahul Akerkar. Hey, Hi, Rahul. How are you doing? How are you doing? Hi. So, Aparna, Priyanka, Sriram, the final three contestants on the pitch. Mr. Rahul Akerkar, I don't know whether any of you have eaten before at Indigo, but I have, and I can tell you that... Uh... And he's, he's like still alive to tell the tale, so it's okay. <laughs> Rahul, would you like to tell your tales to them a little bit? Yeah, sure. I didn't start in food. So I studied for 10 years as a biochemical engineer. Um, along the way, I figured out that I enjoyed working in restaurants and cooking more than um, doing engineering research, and so decided to jump fields. Actually, there was a little period of time where in between, I wasn't sure about that either. 
and I sold in, uh, I sold uh, Indian silver jewelry at flea markets in New York. Um, I did some computer consulting work for a real estate company. Um, I got into some real estate development. I did all sorts of crazy things. But the only thing constant was working in restaurants. And I finally decided that's what I wanted to do. Um, and so I came back from the States and um, came back in 89. And here I am now with food. The point is this. If you have your heart set on something, keep listening to it because at some point, if you change your mind, then you should not have the ego to say, no, 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 I'm going to go ahead and do this. Change your mind, go ahead, change it because wherever your passion is, uh, there will uh, your success lies. It's one thing opening the finest fine dining restaurant in the country. It's another to maintain that position for 12 years. We're going to talk to him about Digestibus Hospitality, his catering business. Tote on the turf, Indigo the main restaurant, Indigo Cafe, Indigo Delhi, and last of all, his expansion plans to go into the capital city, New Delhi. All of that after this break. I'm a very bad businessman. I know how to serve food. I know how to make you enjoy your meal when you come in to eat, especially in, in this business. If, if you pay attention again to the details, to what's bringing people in in the first place, the rest will take care of itself. And now for the Samsung Galaxy Tab 750 contest. What is the milliamp hour of the Samsung Galaxy Tab 750 battery? A. 7200 milliamp hour. B. 7000 milliamp hour. C. 6100 milliamp hour. To send in your answers, type pitch space question number space ABC at 5995 or email us at the pitch at BloombergUTV.com. One lucky winner who can answer the maximum number of correct answers gets to win a Samsung Galaxy Tab 750 at the end of the series.